Hello, I am Milka Jagle, working as Assistant Professor in Department of Mechanical Engineering, Walchand Institute of Technology, Solapur. Today, we are going to see non-destructive testing methods. Let's see. Learning outcome. At the end of this session, students will be able to select various non-destructive testing methods and its significance. So the content for uh, today's session is testing of materials, non-destructive testing methods. So these are the testing of material. So why we need testing of those materials? So these are the few points to assess the mechanical properties like toughness, hardness, tensile strength, ultimate strength and so on to determine the data to determine the surface and subsurface defects, to check chemical composition, to determine suitability of material. In this test, the actual components are subjected to test and the inspection is 100%. While in destructive testing, a test bar is subjected to the actual test and the result is valid for whole lot produced. That is, it is a sampling type of inspection. The results of the NDT are qualitative in nature and does not affect the quantity. So these are the non-destructive testing methods. As the definition indicates, non-destructive testing is the testing of metal or testing of material to determine the defects, surface or subsurface defects without affecting the service life or without hampering the specimen and that specimen can be further used for which it was made. So these are the non-destructive type of testing that is dye penetrant test, magnetic particle test, ultrasonic test, radiography that is x-ray and gamma ray test and eddy current test. So as we have already discussed about non-destructive test just have a look. An NDT is examination of component in any manner which will not affect its future use. So various tests are available for finding the soundness of the components without sectioning or without the destructive test. So the ability to detect the invisible subsurface defects not only aids in maintaining high quality standards but provides valuable help in development of manufacturing methods. They do not provide direct mechanical properties, but they are extremely useful in revealing the defects in components that improve the performance when put in service. So non-destructive tests are more real and they are economical. So let's see first is dye penetrant test. So dye penetrant test. So in this the dye is applied on the specimen. So let's see what is this. So invisible cracks, porosity and other defects can be easily detected by this technique. So components may be of ferrous, non-ferrous, glass or plastic. Material used in dye penetrant test. First is cleaner that is cleans the surface, removes the irregularity, removes the corrosion and cleaner is used on the specimen. Second is penetrant that is dye penetrant penetrates into the discontinuity or irregularities present on the specimen by the capillary action. And the third is developer, it is a tack or a chalk powder. So if you see this figure, first this is the crack which is present in the specimen. Firstly we need to clean this defect or clean this specimen and then the penetrant or the dye is applied on this irregularity. So due to the capillary action the, the dye penetrates into this cavity and then the specimen the surface of the specimen is cleaned by a soft cloth. Then the developer is applied on the specimen. So the defect or the dye is on the the defect whatever present on this 
is can be seen on this developer so if you see this applic after applying the developer so if you let it set for some time the time may be from minutes to hours depending upon the type of the defect dye which is penetrated into this defect that can be easily seen on the developer so this is here here you can also see the diagram which shows the procedure of dye penetrant test so advantages limitations of dpt so that can be used for ferrous and non ferrous alloy components so there is no size limitation of the specimen or the cavity so this does not require skill uh, for the to detect the defect so it is little time consuming because after applying the developer it needs to uh, go set in the cavity and then after cleaning and then after the applying the developer so it needs to just come out so it is cheaper portable and cannot this uh, test cannot detect cracks just below the surface okay this is now next is magnetic particle testing so magnetic particle testing is used for the ferromagnetic components such as weldings casting forgings of steel and cast iron so the component to be inspected for flaw is magnetized and inspection medium is applied to the component so this test is exclusively made for ferromagnetic uh, specimens and firstly before uh, getting into the test the specimen is magnetized so there are two types of method that is dry method and wet method in dry method uh, ferromagnetic powder is spread on the specimen by hand shaker or some vibrator so that the powder is uniformly distributed over the specimen surface and in wet method liquid containing fine ferromagnetic uh, materials are uh, such as kerosene petroleum oil is applied by spraying or by using brush or some dipping so these are the two methods of spreading the ferromagnetic material so next this is the principle so can you see the the specimen is magnetized and this is the defect so the magnetic field is formed around this specimen and wherever the crack is present the ferromagnetic powder clings around the defect so easily the defect is found out so you see the particle cling to the defect like tax or a simple magnet so the next method of magnetization the longitudinal method if we ma magnetize longitudinally we can get the uh, defect and second is circular method so magnetization of component is done by external magnetic yoke coil or passing an electric current so magnetic pole is formed at the crack of flaw which causes the magnetic powder to concentrate on the area and flaw easily gets detected so transverse crack can easily be detected so this is uh, one form of uh, magnetization in which the crack is formed over here this is this is the coil electric current and the magnitude uh, magnetic field is generated so this is the circular magnetization whereas this is longitudinal magnetization so in longitudinal magnetization circular crack is detected whereas in uh, circular magnetization uh, longitudinal cracks are detected so advantages limitation and applications are they are fast and relatively easy to apply so they are used for only ferromagnetic materials under water inspection they might be carried out can be adopted for small demagnetization is necessary it is used to detect the production of defects such as seams slabs grinding cracks etc so these are the references the book by material science and metallurgy dr kodgire and book introduction to 
इंजीनियरिंग मटेरियल्स बीके अग्रवाल थैंक यू